I did a video a few months back on training snakes. And since that video, I've had a ton of questions about target training and requests for an update video. And I'm like, don't tell me what to do, you weirdos. Just kidding, I totally take requests. So let's get deeper into target training. Welcome to the green room, I'm Bob Bledsoe. Behind the camera is the steadiest hand in the film business, my brother Kent. This camera doesn't even need auto stabilization. If I start to move, I just remind myself that I'm standing in a room full of snakes and I become petrified with fear. Instant stabilization. He's a pro. This, by the way, is Echo. She is uh, with me today because she was awake and moving around when uh, I started recording, and so I pulled her out with her favorite piece of wood that she's been on lately. She's also a great example of a snake who's doing really well with her target training. Aren't you? Yeah, you're doing really well with that. Yeah, you're gonna crawl on my head? Target training for the uninitiated is basically using a target like this, or like this, or like this even, as a visual dinner bell. Basically, uh, when the animal sees their target, they know that food will soon be available to them. And for a snake that's new to target training, the idea is just to show them the target, let them recognize it, and then give them their meal. Uh, when they're a little bit more advanced, they'll be required to interact with the target in some way, usually follow it and touch it with their tongue or their uh, nose, like Echo's doing right now, if the, my hand was a target. Probably not a good idea to make your hand a target. Hi, you gonna crawl on me? Is it time to venture off your piece of wood? I need two hands though to do... I guess I don't need hands to do this video. I just need my face. A question that I get a lot is, where do I buy my targets or how do I make the targets? Um, one one target, the this lollipop target right here, if I can manage Echo and do this video at the same time. Uh, this was bought at clickertraining.com. Uh, just go to the store and they've got a bunch of various targets. These are made ma mainly for dogs, but you know you can use them for any animal. This is Echo's target and I made this one. It's uh, just a reflector that I found at the hardware store and like a garden stake. I think that's what these are used for, these green stakes is for your garden, but I just, I just glue it on there. Um, and Another one, same concept, same same reflector, but this one is retractable. This is just a uh, like a pointer that I bought off of Amazon. It's what I guess what teachers would use. It's a pointer like this. In fact, the end of this could be the target. Like you don't have to have a round thing. You could this could be the target itself. Uh, but you know, just glue. I've I've glued and taped this to the back. I had an idea with with these specifically, and it came from Jessica, who uh, ended up buying number three. Uh, number three in the clutch, I was calling him Tracy because he was numero trace. His name is now Soba and he's doing fantastic. But uh, Jessica, when she, um, when she was talking to me about buying him, she said, could you introduce him to target training? Because I have a target that's similar to the one that you have. And you know, if you're going to feed him a few more meals, uh, we mind just showing him that target. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So uh, I actually ended up giving him several more meals because it was so cold where I was shipping him that, that I couldn't ship him for a while. And it just, it didn't target train him, but it introduced him to seeing that target before he got food. And now Jessica is target training him and he's doing really well. She just sent me a video the other day of, of him successfully uh, following a target. So that was really cool. Anyway, my point is this, that what I'd like to maybe do, if there's other people that are interested in that, uh, you know, for people that, that purchase a hatchling from me, if they want me to show them a target when, when I feed them, you know, before I send them out, I'm happy to do that with a target like this. And then I'll just put the target in the box with the snake and ship it all. And then you got, you got their target and everything. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see if people are interested in that, but I think it's kind of a cool idea. So I'm, I'm going through target designs. You know, it's not going to be a professionally manufactured target like, like this one is but it's gotta be small enough to fit in a box. So this is my first idea for a design. Let me know if you guys have any ideas of, of a design that would be good for something like that. I'm gonna get some B-roll for you guys. For those of you who haven't seen the expanse of the ladder, since this camera doesn't uh, do the whole thing, check this out. That's the cliff that Echo likes to sit up on. And she sometimes goes higher. 
she'll go to the very top of the door and crawl across. But she's happy to sit up there for hours. She'll fall asleep and just be up there. Okay, let's take a look at some snakes targeting. Here are some of my young snakes. A few of them are just starting with training and a couple of them already understand that they need to follow and touch the target for food. I haven't tried to target these kids out of their enclosure or anything like that yet. I just want them to move somewhere towards the target and interact with it before they get their snacks. I'll gradually work them up to following for a longer distance. This is a couple different target training sessions in over the course of a couple weeks. I recorded a target session the other night and my camera was out of focus the whole time. That's what I get for trying to film it myself on a newfangled camera instead of having Kent film it on his VHS camcorder from 1988. It has autofocus. You're seeing this video, by the way, largely thanks to Patreon supporters. This is a list of the lovely supporters in tier two and tier three. This is the live action mid video Patreon scroll because I never learned how to edit an actual scroll at the end of a video. I hope these people are enjoying their extra content and sticker packs and t-shirts and such like that. I certainly appreciate the support because really, I think without that support, I would have had to cut way back on production. And as it is, uh, I'm planning to ramp up video production for this channel. So uh, thanks you guys, really appreciate your support. So let's take a look at Echo in her enclosure. She has totally figured out what target training is. She's highly motivated by food and knows her target. I decided recently that I was gonna start working with Echo on her ladder because I want her to understand that the target means snacks in different settings, not just in her enclosure. I've done this a couple of times now and I'm feeding her very small prey items. She isn't stressed when being moved from her ladder back into her enclosure and I pick moments where I don't have to like completely untangle her to do it. So I just wait until she decides to crawl onto me or when she's just in a convenient position to be moved and then I just put her away. The point is that this is not the same as pulling your ball python out, feeding it a massive rat and then jostling its fat belly around as you handle it again. I don't recommend doing that. If you can target your animal out feed it something small and then gently put them away or better yet, target them back into their enclosure. I don't think you're risking regurgitation. In Echo's case, her ladder and her enclosure are in separate areas. So I can't just target her back into her enclosure. I have to gently bring her back and, and put her in there. So Maya, my black headed Python is just starting, but she's doing really well with the target. So let's take a look at that. Wait, Kent's corner. Right after Kent's corner. Hi, and welcome to Ken's Corner, the only segment that you and your family all look forward to watching, and your friends and neighbors too. Anyway, you may remember that in the training video a few months back, Bob somehow target trained me so that every time I see the target, I want food. Ha ha, really funny. Well today, I'm gonna de-target train myself. I have the target right here, and I have a bowl of peanuts. So, the target is gonna make me wanna eat food but the peanuts are gonna deter me from eating food because I am highly allergic to peanuts. So that will rewire my brain. All right, here goes, target. Okay, that should be fine. Test number one, out of the way. Ready for test number two, target. No problem. I mean, I feel kinda hungry, but it's fine, I think. We'll do it one more time. Test number three, target, yeah, awesome. Oh God, um, I think I need to make a phone call. Thank you for watching Ken's Corner. Mom, I think I need you to call 911. You okay? Yes, mom told me to take Benadryl. Well, I apologize for target training you. It was a prank and I didn't realize it was gonna work that well. Now I'm just really sleepy. Okay. Let's get to Maya. She is new to me and therefore new to target training. You'll see a few target training sessions with Maya. First, when she was on paper, which I had her on for about a month and a half, and then I switched her to Aspen for her quarantine tub. So that's what she's on right now. Aspen is great, you guys, for a black headed python. Not so good for ball pythons, unless you live in a really humid environment, but I love that stuff for her burrowing through. It works really well. Anyway, let's get back on subject, shall we? 
So the idea with starting a snake on training is that they see the target and interact with it by touching with their tongue or their nose. I find that my super dwarves and the black-headed python are eager to just come and inspect it. So they'll do what they're supposed to do right out of the gate, even though they don't realize that that's how they get food. But I think that it speeds up their training if they'll interact with the target just out of curiosity. Some of the ball pythons will do that as well, which is really helpful. I have a puzzle feeder for Maya, but I'm not using it much because I want every food item to be an opportunity for target training for her. Once I'm confident that she understands the target, I'll start putting the puzzle feeder in there and I'll target her out of her hide and just let her go to town. I target train my snakes for several different reasons. One of them is just practical, which is getting them out of a tight spot. So uh, for instance, let's take Tiger Lily. I'm, I'm target training her from a hatchling. And if she's really good at targeting when she's an adult, and roaming around the house, I won't have to move furniture to get her out and, and put her away, like I have to with my current adult females. The other big reason for me target training some of my snakes is that it's kind of reverse hook training. It's letting them know that the only time I'm feeding them is when they see that target. And it's kind of an experiment to me. I, I don't know if it's gonna work as well as hook training. Um, and a couple of my snakes, including Maya, the, the black-headed python, are still getting hook trained. I think I think she needs to be doubled up on that. Like she needs to know that when when the hook is in there, she's not getting fed and when she sees the target, she is getting fed and hopefully that will give her a distinction. But the main reason for me target training the snakes is just to get their brains going. I like my snakes to have enrichment and getting them into thinking mode and having them complete a task in order to get food gives them a chance to use those brain cells, which I think is really cool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. I am falling asleep here. Well, how many Benadryl did you take? I probably ate like seven peanuts, so I took seven Benadryl. You took seven? Kent, just... Take the rest of the day off. You mean all I have to do to get a day off is take seven Benadryl?